So I got this question on my AMA about my setting a setup for my Egghead tutorials, and I actually had um, posted earlier the hardware and software I use, which might be interesting. You can check that out. Um, but uh, one thing that's I guess important at the kind of on the outset is I have this RDM tool that I use to set my resolution to 1280 by 720, and uh, yeah, so that way the videos are recorded at the right resolution. Um, I'm, I'm not using the normal mic or normal like hardware setup that I do for my videos. I'm just sitting on the couch with my laptop. But um, anyway, for the way that I get this um, experience set up for my beginner uh, guide to React course is I pop open my terminal and I go to, um, uh, right now I put it in temp, the beginner's guide to React JS, yes, and I pop open Atom in that directory and then uh, this is the way that my editor looks like normally. Um, I'm just using, like, I think this is the default um, syntax highlighting and whatever. Um, fun fact, actually, um, I created a um, fork of the HTML syntax thing so that when you have text, or, or like text babble or text JavaScript, I, actually, I guess it's any text inside a script tag it will use the um, Babel syntax um, or Babel language syntax highlighter inside of here rather than just the regular JavaScript one. So you get like JSX support and stuff, which is kind of nice. So um, yeah, you can take a look at my fork if you want something nicer in index.html. But anyway, um, yeah, so it's just a bunch of index.html files. To get things set up nicely, um, I open up my settings and I change my theme to be one light because I think that most people appreciate the lighter version. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I have had comments that people like the lighter version. Then also you can edit your style sheets in the config folder. Oh, that's nice. I always open config folder and it winds up opening like a whole another instance of the editor. But if I just click on your style sheet, that'll open up in here, which is much nicer. So anyway, I've got, um, like, if you have never edited this before, what you're going to have is something like, I, I don't know, um, not a whole lot of stuff in here. But I've added a whole bunch of um, extra things that are, like, based off of, you know, if I'm going to give a workshop, then I just um, uncomment that, and it hacks away at a bunch of the CSS on the page to hide things and make things bigger or whatever. Um, and then um, also if I just want no line numbers, then I just save that and poof, the line numbers are gone. Um, or if I just want code only, then that'll hide like a bunch of other stuff. Um, but then I have my egghead lesson, which will do a whole bunch of that stuff all together at once. Um, makes this bigger, removes the gutter, which actually I think I didn't do in earlier lessons, but I do in later lessons. Uh, but yeah, just like remove as much noise as possible. Keep the line numbers because that's useful. I should probably remove these arrows because that's kind of annoying. I don't need those. Um, and actually, just for funsies, I'll show you how I do that. So we'll um, command option I to open DevTools just like you do in, in Chrome. And then you click on this and go to, well, yeah, let's see. Let's toggle that off and then we'll get that. Well, yeah, that's tough. Okay. Well, we'll just go over here, and get rid of the console here, and inside of here, I'm going to get, um, let's see, there's probably some CSS, if I just delete that, no, that's not going to work, but if I do display none, or, uh, or sorry, opacity zero, or visibility, then, or uh, really hidden. Yeah, there we go. So what I need is then to find um, like a selector for that. So this is where uh, CSS and JS would like totally make me mad because these I, um, class names would be like nonsensical and if they ever changed the CSS that applied to this thing then I'd be totally, um, I'd have to go update everything, which would be super annoying. But anyway, um, they're not using CSS and JS, so this hopefully will be okay. Um, so we're looking for here, and actually you can look right in here. It's in Atom Pane, Div, 
Atom Text Editor, and then a whole bunch of divs, um, and then div icon right. It doesn't show class names though, which is unfortunate. But you can also look at um, some of these uh, things here, hover over these, and I think we're probably going to want, that's probably good. So we'll just take this selector and I'm going to add no um, chevron things. Um, put that selector in there and just do visibility it in. Uh, rats. So that didn't work for some reason. I wonder why. Well, let's see, it shows up on 194. Visibility hidden. Uh, okay, interesting. Let's hover on that. No. If I hover on this, no. Hover on this, boom, okay. So, somewhere in here, ah, there's a, okay, well, that's easy enough with a hack like this. Important. There we go, save that, and now it's gone. Cool. Um, I don't mind doing important hacks when I'm hacking away at stuff like this. I think, yeah, it was whatever. Cool. So anyway, that's um, that's how I make the editor be like, I guess this is like a Zen mode, but I, I make my own Zen mode. So I like bump the font size a whole bunch and, and um, yeah, just do a whole bunch of stuff. Um, hide the, uh, I don't need to hide this thing because I can command um, backslash and that'll pop that open and close, so I, I leave that because that's useful. Um, but yeah, I can hide the header and footer and, and not show uh, git changes, so I have these lines that show up and if there are uh, changes and I'm, I'm in a git folder or something and that's uh, distracting, so I just hide those, stuff like that. Um, yeah, so then the... Um, actually, what I did was I had a... Um, browser sync thing uh, that I, I use to keep my uh, browser in server in sync. Let me see if I actually still have that in the um, advanced. Yeah, so it was just this thing. I had it installed but not committed to, like there was no package JSON committed or anything. So I could probably just do this with npx and that should work. npx is the best. Um, so then I would see that was on port 3000, I think. And I pull this over to do full screens. I pull that over as far as it'll go. And then I uh, command shift F to hide um, this. And then uh, browser sync's going to give me a listing of these files. Um, here, I should actually um, copy this. Just put that there. Um, and then, yeah, I can just go to the world and open up the index. And then, if there wasn't a bunch of stuff, which most of them there wasn't, I would bump this up to about like 300%. And then, um, Command Option J will pull up my dev tools and I'll pull that on to the bottom. Um, and here, I can like look at the dev tools. I'd also bump that up to something you know, kind of reasonable. Um, you want as little dead space as possible. Um, so yeah, anyway, with that, all that, now I've got that experience. And uh, yeah, I can make changes, whatever. Um, lose world. Oh yeah, one other thing that I did was I have uh, Prettier set up in this repo. <laughs> well, uh, sorry, I, I have Prettier set up in my IDE. I just used the Prettier Atom package. And... Um, Unfortunately, when my screen is so big like this, um, things can get a little bit wide um, when it auto formats things. And so what I did was I added a, um, actually, I think I've got it in the advanced one. Let me find it. Um, advanced 
added a prettier RC that had the print width set at 50. Um, and so then, like, through the whole course, it would, you know, um, make it smaller or less, uh, sorry, narrower. Um, and then I just hit save and it would auto format. And I don't think that was distracting at all. I think it was much better than the alternative, which would be watching me um, make those changes, uh, which I think would not have been fun. So anyway, um, I think that's pretty much it. So hopefully that's helpful. And uh, yeah, if you haven't watched the, the course yet, I highly recommend you do. I worked really hard on it and I think it's pretty cool. So all right. Ciao.